Hi, good morning. Uh, this is going on the third day since my surgery to remove my mandibular tori. I wanted to put this on so I didn't forget to show you what I was using for icing. I found these on Amazon. They're super comfortable. It's just one piece. It's kind of neoprene and there's a gel inside. And so I ordered a couple of these and put them in the freezer and I just, you know, changed them out. And they're easy on, easy off. All right, so the other thing you can do is put, because it only stays cold for probably five to seven minutes, but if you have any little ice packs, the gels, if you just wrap it in some gauze or even a tissue, just so it's not directly on your skin, you can slide this inside of that little black neoprene thing. <laughs> so anyhow, and then they also have given me some that um, were backed. So if you don't have something that you could wrap around your head like that, you could also just hold this on and you can mush it around and make it a little softer. Anyways, icing is really important. The other thing I've been doing is uh, getting ice, little ice chips and putting them in there and kind of moving them around gently. Rinsing with warm salt water, not hot, and also rinsing with the chlorhexidine. So those are things that I've been doing. I wanted to show you what it looks like today. It looks gross, but it doesn't feel terrible. But I just want you to see, and it just it's gonna take a week to 10 days for all this tissue to kind of resorb down and heal. But here we go, ready? It's a little raw looking in there, but it doesn't feel bad. Uh, overall, I'm really surprised at how simple this has been. And if I had known that it would be it, this easy, I would have. I really would have done it years ago. I was just so fearful, and I'm someone that's in dentistry, and that's probably why, as I know too much. Anyhow, um, I'm still taking my arnica, and I'm taking antibiotics, and some. What one other thing that I did do, and I just wanted to let people know that uh, if you do get cold sores. Um, I've only had a couple in my life, but you know, it's part of the uh, chicken pox virus uh, and it lies dormant. And whenever, for whatever reason, if you're under stress, whatever, whatever triggers it, sometimes cold sores could happen. And I was afraid since they were in there doing so much work, it was going to trigger that. So I went ahead and got a prescription for some Valtrex, which I started taking about three days before the surgery, and I'm still taking it um, for a couple more days just to make sure that uh, everything stays calm in there. So anyhow, again, these are just my um, personal experiences and my personal opinions. I'm not a doctor. I'm a hygienist, uh, and I don't know everything, but I do know what's been working for me, and I wanted to share that with people that may possibly be thinking about going through the removal of their mandibular tori, uh, but again, my opinions only. And do know that 40% of the population do have some form of tori. If it's underneath the tongue, it's just called mandibular tori. If it's along the outside of the upper or lower, it's called exostosis. And then you also could have palatal tori. Um, I've never heard of that being removed, but again, doesn't mean it's not possible. Uh, I just have never seen it or, um, or heard of it. So anyway, uh, I will let you go. Thanks for listening for uh, day three, and I will be back tomorrow. Thanks again.